Hi and welcome back. In this lesson I'll show you a variety of ways to scatter objects along a surface in Houdini. We're going to start with some basics and then move on to creating more efficient methods to calculate the number of objects to be scattered and do some more fun stuff with this. So to get started we are going to drop in a geonode which we will rename scatter and we'll start with the surface which is a grid so drop a grid and what i'm going to do is change the size of the grid to something a little bit bigger so i'm going to turn it to a 32 by 32 grid for this example the objects that i'm going to scatter are going to be a cube which i'm going to change from a primitive to a polygon and I'm going to put end caps on it, as you can see here. And also, I'm going to drop in a torus. Now, to be able to select between the two, I'm going to drop in a switch node. And I'm going to connect the tube and the torus to the node. And just to show you how the objects get scattered on the grid, we're going to use a copy to point. So you connect the switch node to the leftmost input, the grid to the rightmost, and then when you put the display on the copy to point, you're going to see your object copied on every single point of the grid. So if you select the switch and you'll see that you have the two inputs, so zero would stands for the tube. And if you move that to one, it's going to put on the torus. And then if you move it further, you're going to get an error because we don't have anything at the moment that's connected to it. So later on, I'll show you ways to automatically calculate the number of objects that are entering the switch itself. But for now, we're just doing the very, very basics. Now, one thing you also notice is that our objects are not aligned the way they were when we created them. So if you look at the torus or the tube, you'll notice that, notice that they're pointing upwards. But as soon as we copy them to points, they're facing um, in a different direction. So one quick way to fix that is to drop in an attribute wrangle node and just set the normals to the z-axis. So we're going to do that by getting an attribute wrangle and putting it between the grid and the copy two points. And in the vex expression, I'm going to type at capital N for normals equals, we're going to use the set command and we're going to set zero to, sorry, x to zero, y to zero, and uh, one for z close the parentheses and semicolon and then once you enable that you'll see that they're now facing in the proper direction the next method we'll explore is using the copy stamp node as you can see in the documentation from side effects it's not a recommended way to create variations when copying two points we will explore four loops in a little bit i want to quickly go over the copy stamp so you know how it works in general one thing to remember with the copy stamp node is that every copy that you make creates an actual object, not an instance. That can quickly bog down your scene if you have multiple objects you want to scatter. For this example, I added a couple of additional nodes, a box and a sphere, so we can have more variety in the scatter. I'll remove the copy to points node and replace it with a copy stamp node. Connect the switch to the left input and the attribute wrangle to the right. In the parameters of the copy stamp node, there are three tabs. Select the stamp tab and make sure that the stamp inputs is checked, otherwise the next step won't work. Under variable one, type pick object as the name of the variable we will use to randomize the selection. And besides value two, type R-A-N-D open parentheses, at ptnum, and close parentheses. We'll want to multiply this by four to match the number of inputs 
in our switch to create some variety. Now go to the switch node and in the select input parameters type the following. We'll use the stamp command, open parentheses, and then we'll enter the copy stamp node we created, which is copy one. We'll call the pick object variable we created and finally enter a zero for the value. And as you can see, the objects are now randomly scattered on each point of the grid. To make it a little bit more interesting, let's add a random scale to each of the objects. So first we'll add a new variable in the copy stamp node, we'll call it scale object. In the value two, we will add a fit01 command. And like before, we're going to add a random value for each point in the grid. We'll then set the limits of the fit01 to be between a scale of 0 0.3 and two. That technically will iterate over each point in the grid and whatever's on that point that has the scale object variable is going to be scaling between these two values. So for this to happen though, we need to place a transform node after the switch. We'll use again the uh, stamp command in the uniform scale parameter. Same as before, but this time we'll call the object scale variable. And once you're done, you can see that each object is going to be somewhat randomly scaled.